G'day everybody, this is a video on Stonehenge and it's basically, I'm going to say that Stonehenge is totally unlike we have been taught. It was totally different in reality. And before I go too much into it, I just want to say thank you so much. I am getting so many amazing educated comments from people, it's really nice. The comments which aren't so nice, I just delete them, you know. I don't waste any time, I just delete them, and if they continue, I just, you know, I just block them. Easy. So, this is something totally not what it is presented as. This is Stonehenge, and firstly, there's something very wrong with this picture. This is an idealized picture. There are no small stones in this picture that you can just carry away because they've already been carried away thousands of years ago. There was a city around this thing, a big city, and basically what's left is the stones that are too big to take away. That's what's here. And I first went to this monument a few years ago. It was very, very beautiful. Uh, driving down this road, taking lots of photos. In the distance, I saw this. Well, that's a bit fuzzy, but essentially it looked like a ruin. It looked like a ruined... A ruined building, basically. And that's what it looks like closer up. It's a skeleton of a building. It was a big building, but it, it's a skeleton. And I thought of this, you know, Stalingrad, you know, ruins. It's ruins. It's bits of pillars with joins on top. That's what Stonehenge is. And everything about it that we think we know about is reconstructing only the biggest bits of it, the bits which people haven't carried away. And there were big cities around it. There must have been. Now, one thing which is interesting, I'll use the pointer. Now, the entrance would have been here. North, south. This was a building. A big building, bigger than this. There would have been a central dome, like a church, and that's what this is. This was to hold up a central dome. The entrance would have been here. We have a very small... Look at these sars and stones. There's a very small one there. Because there would have been a door next to it to enter this building. This is quite a small space, and there would have been fires, bonfires around here, inside the building, possibly with chimneys, to create an eerie atmosphere in here, perhaps burning incense or something. Inigo Jones um, made this idealized picture of Stonehenge with a central altar. I'll show you a picture of that altar stone later on. That wasn't an altar, it was an omphalmos. It was basically a stone representing the center of the world. Pretty much like a Shiva Linga stone. That's what it was. It wasn't an altar. That's a central dome. And yeah, Stonehenge is basically the pillars to hold up a building. Like that, it's all that's left. Because all the little stuff has been carted away and sold. Possibly by the Romans or earlier civilizations. The only way, the, o the only reason for having this sort of lintel architecture is to hold up something, a roof. It's otherwise never done. And this is the proof, if you look at this. That's a join. This is a bluestone unlike any other. 
This old diagram exaggerates the size of the building. Actually about three people can fit into one of these lengthways, not five as, as this points out. And I can't go any further without talking about Loki. Loki was punished. He is the original Satan, the trickster god, the oldest god of mankind, banished from heaven. He is found everywhere in many different forms. Another form was Buddha, the fire god, before Gautama Buddha. He was banished, thrown to earth, put under world mountain or, or a rock. He lives inside the earth, but he's helped mankind and that's why he was worshipped by early peoples. And this could be a shrine to Buddha or Loki or Odin. Essentially Newgrange, egg-shaped because of fertility. And yes, it has its own enclosure, even like a pyramid. That's quite interesting. This is essentially Stonehenge inside a hill. Stonehenge is a tomb that has not been covered up because if you look at this, this is essentially what Stonehenge is. You go inside and there are three recesses and it, it's pretty much the same with Stonehenge. You go inside and there's, there's th three directions, at least three directions. That way, that way, and that way. It's a tomb that hasn't been covered up. Or has it simply lost its roof? And look at this, this is a two, almost 2,000 year old stupa in India and you see this structure here, this is like Stonehenge. These two pillars are like the station stones in front of Stonehenge, idealized picture. Essentially this was a Buddhist stupa to the old fire god. That's what it was. And it's lost its surrounds. There would have been a big mound here. I think that's what it is. Again, this is the great stupa of Sanchi. So basically, you walk inside and, and you walk up these steps and up here, you can walk around the Omphalmos, which is the center of the world, which is, it's a big bell-shaped object. And we have this in China, and Stonehenge could have also been a very big building like this, a medieval communal roundhouse. And this is extraordinary, this, they probably had things like this in ancient times, every building in Britain was round. And that's what it looks like inside. That's extraordinary. In, on the continent in Europe you had communal longhouses, but Britain had round houses and they might have had a very big one. This is possibly what Durrington Walls was. Again showing the size of the stones. So basically if, if Stonehenge was a stupa, basically that's the stars and circle and an inner circle would have been holding up a dome. The Omphalmos inside the Sanchi stupa, which would correspond to the altar stone in Stonehenge. That is the altar stone. It's a totally different type of rock to the rest of Stonehenge. There are three types of rock. There is this basalty sarsen or saracen or even, I guess, they called them saracen stones in medieval times. I guess Phoenicians, they thought Phoenicians did it. And that is the altar stone. The other stone is the blue stone. Okay. This is something which used to be a Stonehenge, it's been converted. If, you, if you've been to Germany, this is Aachen Cathedral. And if you look at that, that is the original part of the cathedral, Roman. The roof, obviously the roof is newish. That's a, a, a newish Gothic part. Here is a newish sort of classical thing. 
and it's a Stonehenge on the inside which has been rebuilt from a pagan temple. This was Charlemagne's capital, he wanted to be Roman, so this architecture is very late Roman. The trilithons correspond to this area, and there's another area back there which would correspond to the stars and circle, and apparently you can superimpose Stonehenge upon this and they're about the same size. And it has a dome, like a stupa. Very Byzantine, indeed. So you go up one level, it's like this. And that's basically what it looks like. Converted, possibly, from another Stonehenge in Germany. And again you have this, you, you see how far the wall goes up, there would have been a roof on top of this. You don't build this unless you have a roof. And that's what the experts are not getting. They don't have enough imagination to get this. This was a huge building. The Valley Temple, by the way. Another thing they're not getting. This was a city area. These are all tombs or something. Or they were streets and these are round houses. You see, they're all in a line because they were actually streets in a city. Maybe the occupant died. There was a catastrophe. They put the skeleton in there. But these are streets of tombs around Stonehenge, which is there. This is the avenue, you can barely see it, it goes down to a river. This is older, they call this the Kirkus. They say, oh, it was like the funerary games with Achilles, and they, they used to run backwards and forwards, etc., for, for the funerals of these nobles, or whomever. I don't think so, I think this was a royal processional for victory parades, whatever. And China, it's an ancient civilization still in existence. So if you go to China, this is almost like the Giza complex. This is like a Stonehenge. This is the Temple of Heaven in Beijing, built in the 1300s. And central dome, stars and circle, although it's, it's not lintels. This is built for fertility reasons, like Stonehenge, I guess, would have been built. And there are basically lintels inside. And I read in a book about the Temple of Heaven that the mortar, mortise and tenon joints in China at the time were only used for royalty, for temples, for important buildings, other houses were not permitted to use them, and I guess it was the same thing in England. And this is just proving that Stonehenge indeed was not a roundhouse, like one of those Chinese roundhouses I've, I've showed you. They're called tolus, by the way. There's too much mathematics here. It's a fertility temple of some sort. And the Temple of Heaven, this area is about the size of the outer ring of Stonehenge, the outer ditch, which I find interesting. This m could have been modified from a type of Stonehenge. The, the ceiling is amazing. Did Stonehenge used to look like this inside? And here we go. Look, this is the built in wood, held up by pillars. This is what is holding up the dome. Okay, thank you very much.